All right, guys, welcome back to the Nugget Bridge Invitational. We are down to the top four here in, you know, the Invitational, you know. My name is Dwee Ha. Joining me on the mic right now is going to be Kimo TFC Nishimura. First off, Kimo, thank you for joining us. I think they can actually hear you this round. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, we got a pretty exciting matchup for you guys right now. We got Conan versus Layo here. And, you know, of course, there's I don't think there's any need to introduce who Layo is. Nope. He is the only German to top cut the 2015 World Championships versus Conan, who qualified for the World Championships this year. Unfortunately, didn't do as well as he probably hoped he would be able to do. But now he is here in the top four. He is going to be running Kangaskhan, Landers, Thunderous, Aegislash, Entei, and Porygon 2 versus Layo, running a team that is similar to his world team with Hydreigon, Heatran, Gardevoir, Landorus, Washrodom, and Amoogus. Chemo, you just saw Conan play. Yes, I did. You have one player left in the top four that you think is going to win. Yep. And, you know, how do you think these two teams match up against each other? I think this matchup is actually pretty even. Uh, on one hand, you have Conan having Entei and Aegislash, which really puts a stop to Layo's Mega, and Porygon 2 to stop the Trick Room option. But on the other hand, uh, I don't feel that Double Genie is the strong as, as strong as it could be against this matchup. And when Double Genie isn't strong against the matchup, there's a few problems going on. Yes, absolutely. We go to the leads right now. Kangaskhan and Entei out for Conan's side of the field, while we have Heatran and Lanners out on... Uh, Lyo side of the field, so, you know, we do see the Intimidate go off onto Entei and Kangaskhan. That is a huge Intimidate right there to two very, you know, powerful physical attackers. Definitely. Uh, there's a lot of ways this early turns can go. We we know for sure now that Kangaskhan has low kick, but uh, because of the Intimidate, I doubt it could pick up the KO. That put Tetron in a pretty good uh, position because it doesn't take... There's no Intimidate for either of them, but it doesn't worry about Sacred Fire like Landorus does. We haven't seen Snarl on Entei. Stone Edge doesn't do that much damage. I feel like Heatran could really do some work in this early turn. Yes, definitely. I mean, it could easily go for a Heat Wave, a Flamethrower onto that Kangaskhan. Uh, it could also possibly go for an Earth Power onto that Entei if it really deems that Entei is a big threat. Of course, Landorus out on the field right now. I believe that is going to be a Choice Banded variant. Not exactly sure what it is. Maybe he's changed it in between his Worlds run. But, you know, that Choice Band Landers, without an Intimidate, is going to be doing a lot of work. I mean, Entei's not going to enjoy taking a Rock Slide. Entei's not going to enjoy taking a Earthquake. But, of course, he just retreats it instead. Going to go right now into the Wash Run right now. Possibly try and take a Sacred Fire, maybe. Just does not want to get his Landers burned. As Heatran going to go ahead and switch out. In comes the Amoongus. So, Layo not even bringing a Mega this game. I think he realized that a Conan team had enough uh, tight matchup synergy for Gardevoir to be less effective. I, I really respect teams in this format that don't rely on their Mega. And we do see Kangaskhan now go for the fake out into that Washroom slot. Going to do a still a pretty good amount of damage, maybe about 20% right there, as the Sacred Fire does connect. Going to target down that Washroom right there. Good switch right there from Layo. Uh, does not pick up the burn, and it's a good thing that that Amoongus was not in that Washroom slot instead. Otherwise, it would have taken a Sacred Fire, and that would have been done a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. I think... Earlier to the game that we just saw with Conan in it, Entei has a really strong position. I think Entei is really proving itself to be a, a top contender in this metagame. Uh, there's definitely going to be a KO on Layo's side because Rotom's either too low, but by not going for the uh, in going for the Rage Powder, you, uh, a double up would t take out Amoongus. That now you have to kind of measure who's going to be more helpful in this game, Rotom or Amoongus, and we see that he's chosen. Amoongus. Going to go straight into Heatran right now. Probably going to try to take anything that uh, that Kangaskhan or that Entei was going to throw at it. As we see the substitute right now from the Entei. Interesting move right there. I haven't seen it. I think you might have seen it in the game before, mm -hmm. Kimo. As the return does connect with the Wash Rotom, and that should... Ooh, the Citrus Berry is going to be able to take it out of range to pick up the knockout right there. So, clutch Citrus Berry. And, you know, Rotom is still there as... Rotom does go for the Electroweb here, going to target down that Kangaskhan, going to slow it down. Unfortunately, Entei was able to get up the Substitute to block that speed drop right now. And, yep, that's it. The Substitute does not even fade. I'm actually pretty surprised that Rotom took the hit. I expected uh, Kangaskhan's return to do, you know, bigger damage. That suggests to me that Kangaskhan is jolly, not a power-boosting nature. So, I feel that Heatran could deal with low kick. Heatran with a sub, or Entei with a sub up is kind of scary, but it doesn't have any presence that really scares Heatran. 
as we do see, Heat Ran go for the Heat Wave right now. Going to target down that Kangaskhan. Going to try to break that substitute on that Entei right now. Is it going to be enough to break that substitute? It is enough to break that substitute. And now Entei is going to be exposed as Kangaskhan does go for the low kick. It is intimidated. And Heat Ran hangs on. Does not get knocked out as Rotom does protect itself. And, you know, protect is not a very common move on, on Rotom at all. Yeah, it's kind of a tricky situation for Layo. I feel like the lead matchup was so, so strong in Conan's favor that it really allowed him to get to this point. Uh, I, the big question for me is, will Stone Edge do enough damage if it actually lands? Uh, but it's very possible for a Conan to grab a double KO on this turn. He could make some switches, but I don't think any of them are advantageous enough that he can recover right away. It's going to take a lot of long-term thinking on Layo's part. Yeah, and you know, Amoogus could possibly come in, try to provide some, uh, Good Rage Power support right here as we see Entei come out. Going to switch out right now. Going to go into Aegis Slash here. As Kangaskhan goes for the Sucker Punish. Not going to try to uh, risk getting taking, taking anything for that. He ran it all. And that does pick up the knockout. And now Rotom is free to move. Is it going to go for another Electro to have some more speed control here? Does go for another Electro Web. Going to hit both Aegis Slash and Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is now at two stages of reduced speed. And Aegis Slash now at one stage of reduced speed. Of course, Aegis Slash is not very much a speed Pokemon anyways. Speed control is definitely the way in which Lyo could bring this back. Landorus right here really threatens Conan. Uh, give Kangaskhan another reduced stage of attack. Possibility of hitting Age Slash super effective for an Earthquake. Um, we've only seen three Pokemon on Conan's side, Entei, Kangaskhan, Age of Slash, and like, just looking at that, it seems pretty implicit that Landorus is Conan's last. Possibly. Uh, of course, Age of Slash now, they are well-known to carry Wide Guard. That might be problematic right now for Layo if he's just going to try to decide to go for Earthquakes. Uh, of course, Earthquake can do a lot of damage. That Age of Slash might not be the one-hit KO that that Layo really wants right now, but it will be able to pick up the knockout on that Kangaskhan. But Age of Slash across the, the field, you know, is it going to Wide Guard or is it going to go on the offense? What does this Age of Slash know? So, just based on the last games, I don't think that it has Wide Guard. I would have liked to see... Oh, but... I guess he never had the reason to use it last <laughs> As we do okay. see the wide guard there come out, going to protect the team from the Earthquake as Kangaskhan going to go ahead and go for the return onto that Wash Rotom. One of the things about wide guard this generation, you can use it non-stop. And I believe that that Landris is going to be choice locked into yep. Earthquake. So right now, Layo is going to have to find a way out of this to be able to uh, allow himself to continue going for those Earthquakes. Or, you know, he has to find a way to knock out that Age Slash or allow it to not go for those wide yards. That was a really good play on Conan's part. Uh, there was hope in Layo's heart. You know, he could have brought that position back with a strong earthquake, but the wide guard, a choice locked on Landorus, it really sets him back. It's going to be really difficult for him to win this game. He can't, He doesn't have the freedom exactly to switch to Amoongus because Rotom will get KO'd and then Landorus just comes back out. Landorus can't really take on all four Pokemon with the Choice Lock. That's why uh, Choice Lando in general has been declining in usage uh, since the beginning of the season. Just because options like Wide Guard are so threatening to your Choice Lock that it's not worth it. Yeah, and one of this uh, this situation right now highlights how important it is to to have four Pokemon just so you can have double switches because right now Layo's really looking to be able to double switch but unfortunately he just cannot as we see the wide guard come out again and the earthquake comes out right now Layo just content to you know earthquake into nothing as Hydro Pump right now comes out gonna target down that Kangaskhan is it gonna be enough to pick up the knockout it is not Kangaskhan hangs on with five hit points and goes for the return to pick up the knockout right there so the last Pokemon gonna come in gonna be Amoongus and I don't think Amoongus has anything that can really help in this matchup at no, all. it does. Uh, it could possibly spoil the H slash. Which prevents wide guard. Possibility for Layo to bring this back exists. The problem is that in sporing H slash, you have to hope that you're faster because of Electroweb, but you're also going to be hitting your partner with your choice locked Earthquake. Now, assuming that it's choice banned, which you said, I'm going to trust you. Trust you my life, do we? Uh, <laughs> do you want to go back to the Gold Star system? Hey, if you want to go back to the Gold Star system, that's perfectly fine with me. I already have the pizza. Uh... But it's still hard for... I mean, okay, if Landorus actually is in the back, this game's over. Yeah. But not just Landorus, Thunderous as well. Like, Landorus, Thunderous is an instant lose. Porygon 2 is possibly in the back, who could just pick up the KO with an Ice Beam. There's not really any way Layo can bring this back. Conan has taken this game. Yes, and we do see Landorus come out, and, you know, Earthquake... 
being choice locked into that, that's unfortunate when you see another flying type Pokemon come in. Uh, gonna go from this Intimidate right here. It's not gonna be good as the Earthquake does come out. Gonna connect with that Amoongus and the Aegis Slash too. Aegis Slash not gonna be content with just going for a White Guard as it sets up a Substitute. Mm -hmm. Gonna prevent Amoongus from being able to spore it, so good call right there from Conan, and we see a lot of the tricks out of uh, Conan's sleeve. We see the substitute, we see the wide guard, you know, that's gonna be important for Layo to know. Again, it's not really possible for Layo to bring back this game one. The most he can do is gather information. I wouldn't be surprised by forfeit, which you see. Man, I'm just racking up gold stars. Uh, so, at this point, adjustments. I think that it makes a lot of sense to try out Hydreigon. Aegislash yes. did a lot of work. Yes, Hydreigon is going to be a very important Pokemon for Lalio to bring in this matchup. Simply just to bypass that Aegislash. I mean, Aegislash with that wide guard support does a lot of work. You know, that's one of the reasons why I believe Lalio never brought Gardevoir. He saw the Aegislash and he got spooked. Definitely. Entei doesn't help that either, especially since they're known for using Snarl. Uh... In terms of which four I would expect Layo to bring, Landorus and Rotom Wash are definitely returning. I would like to see Hydreigon come. From there, I don't see Gardevoir coming back. Amoongus, maybe. I think the one I would expect to see the most would be Heatran, just because, you know, Sacred Fire is a big deal. Bur free burns are not great. Uh... He doesn't really have anything that likes to take fire attacks outside of Rotom Wash and Heatran, but Rotom Wash building up the burn damage. Uh, we saw that Rotom Wash is fairly important to Lyo's game plan. Electro Web support is really big as a win condition for him. Yes, absolutely. You know, you know, Electro Web is a kind of a sort of surprise speed control method that Lyo does have. You know, I remember when I first saw that on the World Stream. I did not expect Electro Web to come out, and that almost clutched him out of game, you know. Right. His opponent was also surprised, uh, taken aback a little bit by the Electro Web, and it, it's a good move. Electro Web's a great move. It's Electric-type Icy Wind. Like, I, honestly, I, that was something I thought about really early on in the season, and I'm surprised it took so long to pick up. Yeah, so anyways, you know, going back into team preview, Conan off-screen with Porygon 2, Kangaskhan, Entei, Thunderous, Landers, and Aegislash versus Lyos, Gardevoir, Rotom, Amoongus, Heatran, Hydreigon, and Landers. You are correct, Kimo. I think Hydreigon needs to be here. Going now into the first turn of Game 2 here in the first Top 4 match of the Nugget Bridge Invitation. We do see the we Hydreigon, go. we see the Landers, and now for Conan's side, we see the Entei and the Porygon Ooh. too. I All like right. these adjustments on both sides. Uh, not only is Porygon 2 a really solid option in general, but it's exciting. It's not something you really see a lot. Uh, I feel like Pokemon that are unevolved have like this cool factor. Uh, I'm really happy to see a successful download. Uh, I think Porygon 2 is in a really cool position. Hydreigon isn't the most the best thing for it to face up against, and Hydreigon is also in a pretty decent position. But uh. <laughs> Actually, you know, I don't really think it's in anyone's favor right now. The Intimidate's helpful against the Entei. Porygon 2 is helpful against the Landorus. Hydreigon doesn't like Ice Beams. Porygon 2. Uh, one of the things Porygon 2 has to be careful about, has to watch out for the knockoff from that Landorus, does not want to lose the Eevee Light. That's so important. Mm. And we see the burn. Entei gets the Sacred Fire burn, as Hydreigon is going to be content with setting up a Tailwind right here. What is Porygon 2 going to do? Is it going to try to go for the knockout on that Landorus Therian? Never mind. You turn from Landorus Therian. Going to try to switch out. Going to preserve that Landorus Therian right now. Probably wants to switch into Heatran if he has it in the back just to take a possible Tri Attack or a possible Ice Beam right there from that Porygon 2. Who is Layo going to go to? I definitely like that Tailwind from uh, from Hydreigon yeah, as we really see Heatran come, come in and switch in. But at the same time, Trick Room is a very common option on Porygon 2. And we do see the Ice Beam going to connect with that High Dragon, doing massive amounts wow. of damage, bringing it all the way down into about 20%. You know, that special attack boost from that download, huge. Definitely. I'm pretty surprised with that output, really. Uh, looking at the last turn, I'm not huge on that U-turn. I feel like a, just a raw switch to Heatran would have been much more beneficial. You would have gotten the Flash Fire boost. You would have had a, a greater time the, applying an offense. Now what you have is a burnt Landorus, an injured High Dragon, not a lot of bad things, really nothing bad happened to Conan on that turn. 
And remember, uh, the winner of this series right here is going to move on to the finals where they're going to play off for $500 in cash prizes oh. as the hidden power ground from Porygon 2. Going to hit that heat ran. Shukaberry activates. Going to do about 50% after that Shukaberry takes uh, effect. And now Lyo's in it's a pretty tough spot. I mean, he has two Pokemon that are heavily damaged. I mean, that heat ran is taking a beating. That Hydreigon has definitely taken a beating. And Landris is in the back, burned after taking Sacred Fire. With about 50% health gone. Yeah, and Conan right now is just in such good position. He has four completely healthy Pokemon, pretty much. Porygon 2 is just doing a lot of work right here with that Evil Light. Took a lot of uh, hits right there. As we see the Drac Meteor, mm. Porygon 2 dodges it, and Heatran going to go ahead and go for the oh. overheat right here. I don't think that's going to be enough to knock out that Porygon no, 2, like I said earlier. he went all out. He was willing to drop all his special attack just to remove that Porygon 2. Porygon 2 has done a lot in this matchup. <clears throat> and we do see the Sacred Fire connect onto that high Hydreigon. I would have preferred to see a Dark Pulse right there. That could have possibly picked up the knockout on that Porygon 2. But Lyo dropping his Hydreigon as Porygon 2 going to go for the Hidden Power. Going to pick up the knockout here on this Heat Ran, And now it is down to Lyo's last two. Landris, that is already burned. And, you know, one more Pokemon that we haven't seen just yet. Probably Rotom. You think it's Rotom? Yep. I'll bet some gold stars on it if I have to. <laughs> uh, really just... Solid game on Conan's part. Porygon 2 did a lot of work. Uh, he never really had any problems in this game. That's a Moongus, not Rotom. Uh, but you know, you put mushrooms in the fridge. They're related. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really have anything to say except for how well played that was on Conan's part. And we see two Pokemon that, you know, are not that popular at all in this metagame. We see Porygon 2, and we see Entei, you know, two Pokemon that uh, are kind of growing. You know, Entei had a, a pretty strong contingency at the World Championships, and Porygon 2, not so much. We, we It was there uh, day one with Paul Chua, of course, as Porygon 2 now just doing a lot of work as the Spore into the Entei's Protect. Porygon 2 going to go Ice Beam right here, target down that Amoongus, going to do a good amount of damage again, 50% right there. Lander is going to get chipped away, bringing it down to 50%. And right now, Tailwind expires, mm -hmm. a Sacred Fire, and Ice Beam should seal the deal. I think what you can take from this game... Well, there's a few things. First, ha not having uh, um, the option to really effectively choose your Mega is very limiting on your team. Uh, while I do, uh, I said I respect the teams that didn't rely on their Mega, it's fairly obvious that... Not having your Mega takes away a lot of your offensive presence. At the same time, we um, these last two sets with Conan have really shown us how good an option Entei has become. Uh, Porygon 2 is really cool to see. The download boost has done a lot of work. Uh, it, the Ice Beam, Ground, probably normal uh, offensive type combination is very widespread and hits a lot in this metagame. There's a lot of cool stuff on this team. Yeah, and we do see the Ice Beam connect with that Amoongus. Picks up the knockout right there, and now this is it. Even if, you know, a lot of flinches happen, that timer is still on that Landers with that burn. Porygon 2, if if it survives another Rock Slide, will be able to pick up the knockout with an Ice Beam. I think a Sacred Fire might even be able to pick up the knockout right now on this Landers too. Uh, uh, Lyo goes Lyo, down. Lyo forfeits it, and that is it. Conan, in 4-1 to one fashion... Takes this top four match away from Lyo. Hey, Kimo, where's that 